It seems like only yesterday we were hopping around Super Mario games in pure 2D fashion. Now here we are closing in on some 40 years later. I'd say it's about time we take a look back and remember some of the greatest moments from the original trilogy. The Super Mario series got its start on the NES, and there's a reason why this very series is still around today. These games brought us to a place we could only dream of back then, made us feel like the true heroes we knew we were. If you're like me, you had some absolute fantastic times with these games, and they filled you with so many great memories. It was difficult to narrow these games down to just my 10 best moments, but I did it. And in this video, we're going to go over my own top 10 favorite moments across all three of the Super Mario Brothers games on the original Nintendo. Obviously, my picks for favorite moments in these games will probably be different than yours. So if I don't mention your favorite moment in this video, please do let me know in the comments. What are your favorite Super Mario NES moments? I'd love to hear from you. Number 10. But our princess is in another castle. Picture this, it's the mid-1980s and your family just got an NES. You played some video games before, but you've never played Super Mario. So you're trying out the game, getting through the levels, playing around with the power-ups, beating up a ton of enemies. You've explored the underground, leaped around high in the sky, made it all the way through a creepy dungeon, and battled it out with Bowser on a bridge over hot lava. You managed to get past Bowser, sending him plunging to his death in a fiery bath of lava, only to find out that after all that, this was in fact not the end of the game, the princess was not there, and the game was actually just starting. Wow. Games weren't like this at this point. If this was designed by anyone but Nintendo, the game would have probably looped around again sending you back to 1-1 after you beat Bowser. Games usually just had a few screens at this point, and the goal wasn't to save anyone, it was usually to get a high score. The 32 unique stages in the original Super Mario Bros. were a welcome challenge and paved the way for the platforming genre. It pushed video games in general. Our princess is in another castle, was truly an incredible moment. Number 9. Mouser. Do you guys remember the first time you battled Mouser on Super Mario 2? What a wild moment that was! So to give you some context here, you start a new game falling out of a door in the sky, learning a new mechanic of picking up and throwing stuff. You explore through this vibrant, intriguing world Nintendo cooked up, making your way through the level, climbing a huge mountain, all the way to the end of the level, battling a giant egg-spitting dinosaur named Birdo. Then you ride a magic carpet, explode bombs in a dark cave, finally battling it out with Birdo yet again, exploring more wonderful landscapes, hopping around some awesome platforming sections, and exploring another dark cave, this time vertically. After stealing the key at the top of the stage, getting chased by Fanto the Haunted Mask, you bring it all the way down the level and make your way through the rest of the cave. Probably figure it's time for another Birdo battle, but wait. There's no Birdo here. Instead, we soon find out there's a giant rat vigorously chucking primed bombs at us. This was insane. With the frantic music, explosions, and flashing everywhere, this was an absolutely exciting moment and one of my favorite in Super Mario NES history. Number eight, the mysterious coin ship. If you played Super Mario 3 as much as I did back in the day, there's a chance you might have run into a very rare ghost ship. The first time it happened to me, I thought I was tripping. It was such a rare occurrence that I had no idea how to replicate. No one believed me. Was I tripping after all? Ah! Nah, it's actually a real moment. And if it ever happened to you, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. A very amazing moment. The treasure ship, aka white ship, aka coin ship, is a very rare bonus level that will only appear under very specific conditions. First, you have to be on either World 1, World 3, World 5, or World 6. There must be a Hammer Brother on the map because they are what turn into the ship. Finally, and here's the tough part, the tens digit of your score must match a multiple of 11 when you finish the stage. So if the tens digit of your score was 1, you'd need 11 coins. If it was 2, you'd need 22 coins. 3, you'd need 33 coins. You get the idea. So here my tens digit is 9, so my coins had to be 99 for the ship to spawn. Pretty simple once you know how it's done. 
Anyways, this ship scrolls very slowly. It has no enemies and exactly 168 coins and one extra life. You'll still have to fight the Hammer Brothers too. Absolutely one of my favorite moments in the series. Number seven, the Angry Sun. So you're on World 2, about to select the stage on the game, but you notice this stage is a little different than the others. Is that sand? Must be a special stage. When you enter the stage, it is apparent that something is very different in this stage. What is that, a giant sun in the corner? Mmm, must be hot out. Oh, uh, it's following me. Oh crap, it's attacking me. Yeah, Nintendo made the freaking sun a bad guy in this game. I mean, technically it can't be the actual sun. Because, I mean, the light source isn't moving around with the sun, and you can actually kill the sun here, which does not send the kingdom into complete darkness. It's a fake sun, so don't feel bad about taking it out for trying to trick us. Number six, Bowser's Maze. Bowser's Maze gave me so much trouble when I was a kid. It's crazy to think that a game like this could actually have a way to get lost. There are actually two different mazes in the original Super Mario Brothers. The first one is at World 4-4 and is a lot easier than it seemed back in the day. The trick to this first maze is that you've got to go high for the first half of the stage, then low on the second half of the stage. If you end up going the wrong way, the game will spit you back out at the beginning of the maze. It was a little tricky because there was this little area in the second half where you had to backtrack a bit to make it past the maze, and backtracking is definitely not something you do much at all in the original Super Mario Brothers. Now the maze at 7-4 was the big pain in the butt one. Man, this maze got me so bad, I'd get straight up lost. On the first half of the maze, you've got to go low, then middle, then high. Then on the second half of the maze, you've got to go high, then middle, then high again. Before you realized that this was actually a maze, you'd be running around and the map would loop around. Then there was a moment when you realized what was actually going on here, that you had to go a certain way. <laughs> I loved it. Number five, Quicksand Secret. The Super Mario Brothers games were filled with so many great ideas, and one of the most surprising ideas to young me was the idea of quicksand as a level hazard. Quicksand was first introduced into the Super Mario series in Super Mario Bros. 2, and it has been a staple in Mario games ever since. Even today, it still makes a regular appearance in Super Mario games. I think I would probably be disappointed if a new Super Mario game came out that didn't feature some sort of desert world with quicksand these days. It's not unusual for quicksand areas to be associated with secrets. In fact, Super Mario 2 had a secret in World 6-3 where you could partially sink your body in the quicksand, moving left and constantly constantly jumping to access a secret door that would let you skip most of the long stage. Even Super Mario Odyssey had a moon hidden in a secret room, accessible by doing pretty much the same thing as in Super Mario 2. But the hidden quicksand secret that blew my mind was one from Super Mario 3. In World 8-2, right at the start of the stage, there is what just appears to be a quicksand hazard to avoid. This was actually an interesting secret, where if you let Mario completely sink down in the quicksand, you won't die, but instead get spit out in a secret area with two pipes, one on the left and one on the right. The left pipe will take you to an area with a power-up, and the right pipe will take you to an area with 100 coins. If you already have a power-up, like a leaf, I'd recommend taking the pipe on the right so you can grab all the coins. Otherwise, if you do need a power-up, you can get one on the left. I don't know what it is about this one. It was just really creepy to me to fully submerge your body in the quicksand like this. You know, normally when you'd fall in a quicksand pit, you'd be frantically jumping to get the heck out of there. Who would have thought that doing something that normally kills you would reward you like this? This one blew my mind and stuck with me all this time. Number four, Goomba's Shoe. Due to technical limitations, it wasn't possible to bring Yoshi to the original NES, when they were making Mario 3 anyways. Fortunately, Super Mario 3 did get the next best thing, the Goomba's Shoe. This was originally known as Karibo's Shoe in the Japanese and original US release of Super Mario 3. But let me tell you, despite this, that was not the correct name for this power-up in the American region, Karibo being the Japanese name for Goomba. 
It turned out that this was actually a mistake, and Nintendo corrected it with a later US release of Super Mario 3, as well as in the Game Boy Advance remake, Super Mario Advance 4. But the funny thing is, and why this can be so confusing, is that Nintendo once again accidentally labeled it as Karibo's Shoe in the later 1993 Super Nintendo release of Super Mario All-Stars. And that was due to the All-Stars version being based on old code from the original NES release with that mistake still in there. Go! But regardless of what you call it, it was an absolute shame that we only got a single level in the entire game to use this shoe. And to be honest, it wasn't even that big of a level. In my opinion, Goomba's shoe was criminally underused. And to make matters worse, it didn't even make another appearance in an original Super Mario game for another 27 years when it showed back up in the original Super Mario Maker. I guess it just makes World 5-3 that much more memorable. Number 3. New Quest If you've ever made it all the way through the original Super Mario Bros. game, finally reaching the true castle that the princess is actually in, you're presented with what the game calls a new quest. If you've ever tried the new quest, you've likely noticed that the game is much more difficult this time around. For starters, all of the Goombas in the game are now Beatles, which adds a considerable amount of difficulty on its own because you cannot take out this type of enemy with the fireballs, and all of the enemies move faster this time around too. You'll also notice that the elevator lifts in the game are now all shrunken. They're much smaller this time around, adding a great amount of difficulty, especially since sometimes they don't even show up. These are small. Another change in the hard mode is that all of the stages that have a more difficult version later on are now permanently the more difficult variant. Levels like 1-3, 1-4, 2-3, and 2-4 are all at a much higher difficulty than you'll find the first time around. And although the game throws a lot of new challenges at you, most of which are difficult, there is a new element that does make it much easier. The level select. The princess tells you about this when you rescue her. Push button B to select a world. It lets you start the game from any world or skip back to the world you were at when you died. And you're gonna die a lot. Number 2. Super Mario 2 Ending Now personally, I found Super Mario 2 to be the most difficult of the three games on the original NES. Have you tried to play through this one without using the warps? It's actually a good challenge. You're up against so many tough enemies, so many creative and challenging stages, and so many interesting bosses. Actually, the ending of this game was absolutely unforgettable. Spoilers if you haven't beat it yet. The Last World 7-2 was huge. You start out in the clouds outside the final fortress. You gotta make your way past a few sniffets, over the drawbridge, and into the fortress. Inside this place, you make your way to the right, and there are multiple multiple ways to get through this stage. One way is to go down that rope here, or what I always do is keep going right, and go up, and up, and up, and keep going up as far as it'll take you. Then go right, and down, and then fight this birdo, grab the key, then bring it to the left, into this door. Then it's another shocking moment. When you grab the crystal ball, the hawk mouth guy attacks you. What a twist. After three hits, you go inside of it and have a final battle with the evil wart. Feeding him all of his favorite veggies, dodging his nasty spit bubbles, until he can't take it anymore and dies. Must be allergic to veggies. Then you open a vase and release a bunch of these bee-looking guys. They're called subcons. I guess they're fairies. Anyways, these guys absolutely worship you for beating the crap out of wart. Then they carry his dead body away, and then beat the heck out of it some more. Must be some rage-filled fairies. This game was such a trip, and the ending wraps it up so perfectly. There were no fairies. There was no wart. Of course. It makes perfect sense why this game was so trippy. Mario was just sleeping the whole time. The game doesn't let you hit start or anything like that. The only way to get off this sleeping Mario screen is to shut the system off, which at this point was well deserved. You played all the way through that very difficult game from the beginning, beat all of those tough stages and bosses, and it likely took you a long time too. But all is well now, and it was a satisfying click of the power button. Number 1. Super Mario 3 Bowser's Castle 
Speaking of endings, the ending for Super Mario 3 was my absolute favorite moment in the original trilogy. So just like with Super Mario 2, the last level of Super Mario 3 has multiple ways to go through it. The juncture is here in this big room with lava and these donut blocks. The way I always take is probably the easiest path through here, but you'll probably need a flying power-up to go this way. What you'll want to do is keep towards the top here as much as you can to avoid the fireballs. Then you want to make sure to exit this stage using the very top exit. Then you'll run by some Bowser statues. Only the first one will shoot at you here. Jumping on some donut blocks, hopping over Bowser's fireballs, and then you're here. The battle with Bowser is so much fun. Bowser's pattern is very easy to master. He'll spit some fire at you, then jump at you. You can even jump on Bowser's head and not get hurt. The music is frantic, but the battle itself isn't too difficult. Every time he lands, he'll break through a layer of bricks, and you've got to trick him into breaking through all the bricks and falling to his doom. After he falls, he hits the ground so hard, it bounces Mario up in the air. Then, the door opens, and on the other side, it's none other than Princess Toadstool, who then makes a joke about the princess being in another castle. It makes this moment just that much more memorable. Then the curtains close, and the credits roll. What a fantastic ending. So those were my top 10 moments in Super Mario NES history. Did I miss any good ones? I'd love to read about what your favorite moments are in the comments of this video. Let me know. Hey, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it to let me know. And subscribe to this channel for more Nintendo and Super Mario videos. I put up new videos every few weeks or so on this channel. So if you want to follow along, make sure to hit that notification bell so you'll know right when a new video goes up. Thanks guys, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.